I spent hours watching YouTube videos, but they're nearly all for fitting to Bridgeport mills. And I couldn't find anything specific to Warco type mills. And that's what I've got, and I'm sure there's plenty of home ship shop guys that have them. This is my old home shop made power feed, you could call it, which uh, was fitted to the left hand end of the mill where it's sitting. But my problem now is how to fit my new one onto the other end. So that's what we'll be talking about. Well, first off, we've got to uh, disassemble what we've already got. Pull the handle off. That's no problem. And the scale, graduated scale. Now then, with the uh, equipment that they give you with the uh, new power feed, in theory that's supposed to put on there, like that. So already we've got a problem, you see the, the screw of the feed screw sticks out there, so you wouldn't be able to attach the motor to it. Next, the motor goes in there. Now the motor, the pinion gear for the motor, here, yeah. 18 tooth pinion gear, which drives the 72 tooth bevel gear. Goes in there like that. Already we've run out of uh, room. And then in theory, this goes on top so you can retain the, your uh, graduated scale. And then there should be a screw that holds that on. My first thoughts were to trim this end plate down altogether to just a plate on the end and that would give us about 35mm. But the problem with that is there's about 35mm of screw protruding from the end of the actual table. So that would mean taking out the lead screw, which I don't want to do anyway, and taking that off, that 35mm or something like that. Yeah, about 35. Bring it right down to inside here in fact. Cut this right down to a flat plate, bang it on, bobs your uncle, plant your room. The only problem is I don't want to go through that procedure, but taking the end screw out. So, what I'm going to do, there is a little bit of room I can gain by cutting off this protruding portion of the end plate, which was actually the bearing holder, went in there, about the same thickness. That'll give me half an inch. And on top of that, I'm going to cut this down as well. It only goes to there. Right, go nowhere 
any of the, the amount that you need. So I'm going to cut this down as well, take it right down to there, cut that off, which again is about 35 millimeters, roughly. 30 millimeters. That's okay. And just if I need to pin this, drill right through and pin it with a spring pin. I've been taking the end plate and bearing off out from this area here. The uh, lead screw is now hanging under its own weight. Uh, that creates a problem for me because I needed centralising. So once I bored this out and milled off the part that was the bearing holder here, I'm going to make a new bearing with this piece of bronze. I won't be so much a bearing as a placeholder to make sure that the lead screw is central where we need it. Here you can see the step where the bearing was located previously. Once I've milled off this part here, we'll be practically down to that step. I'll shine a little light on it now to make sure you can see it. So that's what we're going to be doing next. Right here you've got a better view of uh, where the lead screw actually sticks out, extends from the end of the table. And that's the reason why you couldn't use their end plate, because if you do, it still sticks out and you wouldn't get the motor on there, you wouldn't be able to hang it on there. So we've uh, done what we had to do on the, the actual original end plate, cut it down a bit, cut the bearing holder here off so we've got a nice flush plate uh, that would uh, be easier to um, drill and tap. And this is where the bearing is going to go that we're going to make. We're going to press it into there and it'll have a hole in the middle, 17 millimeters, I think. Yep. Seven, eight. Don't know if you can see that. Seventeen oh one. So that's the next job.